No jumper. Coolest podcast in the world. Today I'm here with Getter. The man who named the rope. Nicknamed it. I was there for it. You named the rope. You named the cum and created the rope gang. Isn't that crazy to think? Rope gang. <laughs> You've come along. We both have come a long way since then. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I just had no idea in that moment that you were like giving me the name that would then become the name of my, my squad. It's like well, you, you you, the, bay, the beehive. The Beyonce crew, it's like you name but that. It's, it's a beehive, but instead of honey, it's cum. It is cum, yeah. <laughs> and it really, uh, Dylan Francis is the, the criminal. He's the one that we were accusing of, of being like some sort of sexual deviant. Yeah. That was fun. Mm. What the fuck happened? What happened, exactly? <laughs> we got old in the past year you, and a half. Realize, <laughs> Whatever it You was. realize shit, and you're like, wow, fuck everything. Right. And actually, I went to Dylan Francis's dad for uh, a physical checkup on like w- what my body is Sorry, doing. Ball. No, we didn't do that. Oh. But he examined like my <clears throat> medical records. Did you know that it was his pops? Yes. Oh, that's sick. Which was cool. Yeah, not that that has anything to do with absolutely anything. <laughs> I, Still fun. <laughs> introduce me to your boys, including this fucking leech Diablo that just sort of weasels his way in. This is like my <laughs> hey guys, where no you going? jumper. Can I come? No, oh, this is shit. Daniel. Always Sneak. a co-host, never a interviewee. This is my best slash roommate, oldest friend. Also music producer. Also, you came to like two of them back in the day. He yeah, was, way back. Yeah, back to the old spot. Hanging oh, out. Oh, right, 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 right. right. And this is... Wait, what's the Instagram just so that the editor doesn't have to go crazy looking it up? Uh, uh, at sneak underscore beats. There you go, yeah. S-N-E-E-K underscore okay. B. Because yeah. otherwise the kid's mm-hmm. going to hit me up and I'm going to have to explain it to him. He's probably watching right now. And then this is some random kid I met at a gas station. <laughs> he came out of the bathroom without a shirt on. I was like, dude. Just begging for help. Yeah. He had just finished dyeing his hair to match the graphic on his hoodie. Yeah. yeah. You like my hoodie? Then you want to know something funny? You do that we, every day? So we just got a new house. The foolish cold hoodies. In Studio City. And it's three stories. On the first story, there's one room with like a back door. And it's a pretty big room. And I was like, that's Diablo's room because we're on, everybody else, like me and my brother and Daniel, are on the third floor. So Diablo's on the first by himself with all the room he wants to smoke fucking backwards in the house and shit. It's great. Well, Diablo's so no- like blasting music at 1 a.m. and none of us can hear it. Yeah, it's pretty dope. Dope ass house. Awesome. Wow. So this, yeah, there like- must be a lot of like separation between the floors, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like pretty tall. Four floors. So there's no weed being smoked up top? Nope. Mm-mm. Why not? Because everyone upstairs are squares. Yeah. We're not as cool as Diablo. Hey, I don't have a face tap, but I have a face piercing. He has two. Two. You see his new one? Diamonds on his face. Oh, three diamonds on my face. Um, That's really the question. Is just what the fuck is wrong with Diablo. He goes on tour Lil Xan and Pump, and he thinks he's all cool. He thinks he can just smoke weed everywhere. I'm a piece of shit, (laughs) but my music is fucking awesome. But you're a sweetheart. I'm a sweetheart. He's a nice guy. Yeah, you can't even lie, dude. You're a sweetheart. It was literally, we went to the studio one time. (laughs) He was in uh, town when I still had my old studio, and he messages me like, yeah, what's up? Let's go to the studio. And I had never even heard of this fool, and then we went, and then he's cool. That's a lie. He was dropping a lot. Didn't you drop the boss? Oh, yeah. I think he dropped I didn't know you made it, though. He dropped a boss uh, remix, and it was so dope. Everybody sent it to me. I was just like, let's go to studio. Back when I was coming to LA for like the first time and shit, going crazy. I remember you name dropping him when, when I met you. Yeah. As yeah. like a way to explain that you weren't a random. You were yeah. like, bro, you I live with Getter. Everybody does that once in their life. Oh, hell yeah. I'll I'll do that right I now. I remember that. That's my brother. I love Getter. He's actually one of the, my favorite producers in both hip hop and like EDM, bro. Oh. Wow. Thank you, babe. Very nice of you. You as well. The true saga of Sneak is also a very fire producer. His shit is crazy. Hip hop, everything else. He makes everything. And then Diablo is just what? Like, what do you consider Diablo's specialty? In your face, fuck beats. I do everything. I make music, clothes. I feel like I'm the biggest A and R in this music you shit make, right now. You too. make music, you and Chris. Unconsciously. You're not even an A and R. How can you be the biggest A and R? I feel like I'm connected to like more than labels, like to influencers, to artists. What to is A and R? Anal rap. Yes, anal rap. <laughs> Something like that. Cool. I noticed that rappers don't really talk about anal that much. Yeah, they always talk about eating it or fucking puss. Did you see Cardi B's tweet? Never insertion. She was like, I forgot what she said. Something about her ass <laughs> being eaten. It was she was, funny. Did you see the She's tweet? I forgot what she said, but it's good. Cardi, fu- Cardi B's tweet. Something about ass being eaten? Yeah. Is this a sticker? Somebody pull it up sometime. I don't know. Maybe I'm speaking out of turn, but I just feel like Offset's not an ass eater. All oh, those no. Migos, I feel like, just aren't doing any weird shit if like I that. Had Shout out to Migos. You'd eat ass with them? No, I wouldn't. Keep poop off that. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good Unless point. poop is a nice diamond cleaner. Bro, you're never going to get any poop in your mouth eating ass, I don't think. <laughs> to me, he knows. that's not... Know. That's where poop comes from. <laughs> yeah, but True. I mean, I've eaten plenty of ass, and that's just not... like. Fucking an ass, I've you will end up with a big glob. Ass. Yes, true. But you will end up with a big glob of poop on your dick from banging an asshole. But from licking the outer perimeter, eh. You're just checking. You're just you checking. Know, you're on security <laughs> detail. I mean, I had it explained to me that that's how, like, that's the biological use of eating ass or eating pussy or whatever is that, like, as a primate, you would have been doing that to try to figure out if the per- if the ape that you're about you're to like, have sex with. There? Yeah, you want to know if they're safe, if they're clean or not. So that's why you might eat an ass as a, as a primate. No poop. <laughs> <laughs> no poop. <laughs> that's good. It's good to know you can still make me laugh really hard. It's good. The funniest person alive. What is, what's the link, by the way? I'm going to post that shit. It's on my Twitter if you want to grab. Uh, Twitter. Right, I think because Chris just put it up. Also, shout out to Bearwoods. We have this Bearwoods vape pen. If anybody wants to get fucking smoldered, yeah, also does. he's smoking a pre-rolled uh, thing over there, bro. You know what's crazy though is that we did that other podcast that never came out because the Which fucking one? mics weren't on. What podcast? <laughs> Nobody knows, but I had to get her in for a fucking yeah, reunion with Spock. one. Yes, and the fucking mics oh were trash. Oh my god, I totally forgot. I feel, I still feel so bad. He was so pumped on that. I'm just like, oh, I remember damn. that. You guys, you didn't record the whole thing. <laughs> and I like, you like, sent me wasn't connected. Trying yeah. to fix it, but it was just like too quiet. Yeah, he was like, I swear I'll be able to make the file work. I sent it to him. He's like, oh no, this is like your laptop well, recording no, on the other side know, of the room. You know, if there's like, uh, <laughs> like if there's vocals and then background sound, you can limit it and then just take out the background yeah. sound. But it was like level with the background sound, so it was like. Fucking impossible. Just crazy noise. It just wasn't right. No jumper glowed up. I still have the video file, I believe, but not the audio file. So we could just comment. You should just, yeah, yeah, you should just go over it with your own voices. <laughs> Look you. at me in my stupid shirt. You could like try to voice over what you think you're saying. My recollection of that time period was that it was a really interesting interview because Getter had officially like just started like really getting money, just went on like a long ass tour for the first time with all your boys. Hell like you, yeah. you were first kind of like actually doing all this lit shit. Like I remember hearing you on the phone with like your agent and shit, and I was like, oh fuck, this guy got an agent now. Hell yeah, we both came up, bro. Yeah, I don't got an agent. Feels good. You don't need a fucking agent. You're your own agent. You think? I think so. I'm my own agent. You're Asian. (laughs) (laughs) He's Ecuadorian. Is he? Which technically makes him Asian. I love the fact that I'm Ecuadorian, so I really love that too. Ecuadorian. Ecuadorian. All right. Ecuador. That was fucked up. All Equity? the Ecuadorian people at home are cracking their knuckles. Yeah, bro. All your your South American viewers just gonna like unsubscribe. But I went to Argentina one time, so it's all good. It's all good. Adam's cool. What was there? What well, uh, just BMX trip? Oh, we're back in the day, <laughs> yeah. That was cool though. That was actually like right as I was starting to do this. Okay, so what do you got going on in your life lately, Getter? Like, tell me, tell me about what what you're up to nowadays. Let me fill you in. Fill me in. Fill Since my crack the last in. Last time we did one of these. Also, I want to give you this hat. Someone sent it in, and it just I thought it was you. That's me. <laughs> alpha. That. Slap that bitch on right now. You're an alpha. You're a lion. Do you look like Paris Hilton? <laughs> <laughs> So, oh my god, that, actually, that looks cool on you. Cool. It looks so stupid when look I put how, it on. Look how big my head is. Look on the back, it's like barely on. I think that might be because I tried to put it on like that earlier. Did you do that? Oh god, you do have a big head. I have a big head too. Though. I wear like seven three fourths, but I, I'm gonna leave it. Okay. Okay. Leave it Shout right out big but head. it is a good hat. It says good alpha. Hat. It's got pre distressed brim. People just send shit in, and I just thought this was like either the worst or best thing I, I ever it. got. Yeah. I have a hoodie just like that. Alpha. But. So from the last time we did one of these until now, <laughs> a lot of stuff has changed. Yeah. I don't live with Nick anymore. Yeah, how's that going? It's good. Uh, I was pissed at first because he just one day I came back from tour. It was me, Daniel, and him, and he was just like, "Hey, I'm out." And so I was like, "What the fuck?" But was that recent? No, it was what, like a year ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, when almost a year ago now. Yeah, and it, at first I was like, "Fuck him, blah blah blah, this is stupid." But then after a little while, I thought about it. And it's just, he just wants to do his own thing. He explained it to me like, he's like, everything I've been a, a part of with you and everything you've been a part of with me, it's always me and you, or it's always you. And it's never just Nick. So I want to do this. So I, I understood it after a little bit, but I was pissed at first for sure. There was some tension for a while. Did you guys ever diss each other publicly? No, no, no. We okay. always keep that shit private. That's good. But um, yeah, he's, we're, we're still best friends. We just shot that Real Bros of Simi Valley thing. We got the oh, hand yeah. a bunch, so it was tight. Oh, that's sick. That shit's awesome. Come I was going to ask about that because I was curious about the, the state of the Coletti relationship. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure a lot of people who are watching. 
I had a couple people ask me, you know, or like, you got to ask them about what the fuck's going on with Colette. Yeah, no, there's no beef. I mean, you know, people on the internet, like, they go from what they see. So if they don't see me and him hanging out, we're not friends, but we're still really good friends. Okay. Best and friends. What What about like your EDM DJ career versus your rap career? Because I was I was watching a bunch of Tara Reid videos last night. I noticed that the view counts were pretty good. Yeah, that's like more for fun. We've gone to labels and shit and like gotten offers, but. I don't need an offer and I don't need money per se. It's, right. It'd be sick, but like, I don't know. I feel like back in the day, like when I first started, like when me and Daniel first started to upload stuff like under Getter and his old name was Slosh, like it was just, there was no copyright rules. You could upload whatever you want and it was just fun. There was no schedules, people taking shit down, white flag and stuff. So I feel like if I can make original rap stuff just for fun, it's like just going back to that. So I'm not really trying to go anywhere with the rap stuff, but the EDM stuff, I'm not really making the same kind of shit I made. Now it's more like, <clears throat> do you know Flume? Yes. Or like What's So Not or Fly Low? Well, I was watching your most recent video from like two months ago and it was very different. Yeah, it's like um, the new mood, I guess, would be like a sad Odessa, if that makes sense. Just kind of like not EDM, but not fucking trap. I don't know. It's weird. You, No one's heard the album yet, mm -hmm. except for people at it's iTunes fire. today. Thank you. And Diablo. <laughs> but, um, and Daniel. As he smokes a bun to his face. Yeah. Fire. I'm high, dude. And Daniel I'm Jules. Purple. His Terry shit is super dope, too. Thanks. Oh, it was good. Watch. It's going to blow up. All that shit's dope. Thanks, but, man. Okay, so, like, put yourself in that position that you were in, like, when we did that last interview that nobody ever saw, where you were first, like, going to go on these big-ass, like, your own big-ass tours, finally, like, just making a shitload of money and stuff, probably for, like, kind of the first time and stuff, and, like, you're fully just going, and you just got all these kids just doing Molly, rubbing in their eyeballs, <laughs> moshing to your shit every night, that's how I imagine it, and... It seemed like you were just for, first starting to like actually live that life of just being on tour way too yeah. much. Have you kind of dialed it back? Like at a certain point, did your opinion on all that shit kind of change a little bit? Yeah, I feel like one of my goals was always to get a tour bus with all my best friends and tour and make hella money. And so we did it. But now I'm kind of like any tour like that is for a project instead of just for fun. So now I'm just doing festival shit. But I'm putting together a big live show where I'm not going to be DJing and like actually controlling shit and playing shit so it'll be aren't these are fucking weird i have the same mic well i had a it's bug like, like literally crawling oh a tiny bug but these nice. are like i don't know are they weird they scare me they're just really big it's so big. puffy yeah it's, it's you're so right big. there is like a full fucking inch but on these mics side. are cool it's because like, you can like go over here and you can still hear me <laughs> kind of here and stuff like well, I, I sometimes wonder like do you how use the cloud sound? lifter thing or whatever check, 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 check. i don't know there's like this thing because these are like really light. never mind we'll talk about it later you it is have a always aggressive yeah it's like <laughs> just, what just the size of the mic no, the, yeah. like this the pop filter you kind yeah. of feel like there might be like just like a fucking catastrophic oh. dick in front of your face <laughs> yeah, when you look like at that there's something like in there right like pull a out dick a joint. oh shit. oh shit there's a dick in it wait it's but a nug. that's the ultimate test is to say okay so how does this well it sounds <laughs> so clear, weird bro. Right? it sounds super clear but check, if you go check, poop poop Oh See my really god. Crazy. Oh, pop. 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 It's crazy. It's crazy. Let us never speak of this moment again. <laughs> no, at the old store, that's what was so terrible is that those things would just fucking come off and just hunting around. You find I remember it. Remember, like, we'd be like over here, and every five minutes, you'd be like, get a little closer to the mic. <laughs> yeah, that was always the meme about me was that I would be like, just pushing yeah, it more towards that. people at all times. <laughs> or also, you couldn't, you couldn't tap the, uh, the table back then because we yeah. didn't have the foam mat. You should get the desk clamps. Have you seen those? What's that? They're like these, uh, like instead of having these, they, they just clip right here. Mm. And they're like, they, they're mobile. So you can like stretch it up here, bring it down here. Like, I don't know. They're really useful. Well, really shit. I've thought about, what about just having it with the headphones, just build it into the headphones like a couple style. of gamers. Yeah, Xbox. Call me, beat me if you want to fuck me. Don't you think we'd all look more badass if we had like gaming chairs right now too? Oh yeah, way better, bro. What? Why don't you have gaming chairs? We might be getting sponsored and getting a bunch of those. That'd be dope. Wouldn't that be cool? Ooh, no the ones with the lumbar chairs. massager. Oh, there's a massager. And a heater, bro. Everyone can just like pull it all the way back if they really want to. Right. I'll be you, tight. You want to know what I remember was like a really uh, important thing that I remember you talking about that I was bummed that the world never got to hear about on that first podcast is you were describing. A situation in which a girl was trying to get onto your tour bus, 
and the boyfriend got so mad oh at you guys God. for not yes, letting her scary. on the tour yes. bus Did that he tried to fight you. I didn't finish the story. Let's hear it because nobody ever I got mean, to hear it, even though you told me. Oh, yeah, didn't say it on air. Okay, no. yeah. So I'm going <laughs> to avoid all locations and names. But basically, years ago on the tour, I think it was two years ago almost. Two now. years yeah. ago. Yeah, two years ago. Mm-hmm. And we played a show, and it's like you get there early, you walk around town and get food while they set shit up, and then everybody plays, and then you get on the bus, go to sleep, and move. But usually the bus is kind of far away from the venue, it's, or it's like behind it and closed off. But at this specific place, it was on the side street, so like after the show, everybody lined up by the bus, and we're just in there like chilling. And then this, there was this uh, girl that was like, I'm pretty sure she had to have been super fucked up, but she was like screaming how she needed to get on the bus and she needed to see me and like all this shit. And like, we're just like, no, we don't know you. We don't know how old you are. Like, this is no fucking no. And then she started throwing blows at people like our lighting dude. Yeah, Roger, she was like, she was, like trying to fight this dude like... who's like in his 40s. And then she tried to fight the <laughs> photographer and all this shit. And then like eventually I just come outside and I was like, what's up? What do you want? What? She's like, I want to hang out with you. <laughs> and and, and I was like, my friend is sitting right there, yeah, like, and we didn't know. Balls, yeah, like, Daniel was there too, and like we didn't even yeah, know yeah. that. Like she said, like she pointed at her boyfriend and said, "It's okay with my boyfriend." And then I looked at him, and this fool's like trying to catch. Like, <laughs> He's like tripping, dick. <coughs> and then eventually we say no over and over. Get back on the bus, and then everybody starts in saying like, "Yo, she's trying to punch us and stuff." And so like. <laughs> She, she gets the lighting guy, she gets the photographer, and then she started to go for my tour manager. And then everybody, like the other fans and stuff, were like holding her back, like trying to keep her off. And then her boyfriend finally snaps out of his fucking K-hole or whatever and starts getting in my face. And he's like, what the fuck are you doing for? And I was like, dude, I'm saving you right now. <laughs> no, Your wait. chick's trying to get on the tour bus. The funniest thing about that was he was like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> and yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, dude, you just like paid to see my show. <laughs> yeah. And then out of nowhere, my old tour manager, Clint, <laughs> just clocks him from the side <laughs> with like a lighter in his hand, broke his fucking hand. And one of the dudes on tour, for whatever reason, Josh Pan was across the street the whole time <laughs> filming all of it. So he, I'm pretty sure he still has a video. But yeah. Was, oh, my God. She never got on the bus, and her boyfriend got hurt. I love that story for some reason, because it just makes me think about how weird it is that, like, we're always, like, going to shows, like, pretty much sober, and then there'll just be people who are on, like, Molly or Zans or whatever yeah. the fuck it is, and they just be losing it right i mean and you're sober time, so you're just taking it in yeah most of the time they can hold it together right but like every once in a while it's like oh man yeah a little I mean, too much it's all like a party for the fans because it's like once in a while for mm-hmm. them but like when it's every night for us it's like oh yeah like i just started not drinking at my shows and it's way better you used to be always drinking well i wouldn't drink at home and then i would just drink at shows right and it became a habit and then now I'm just trying to just do the whole thing sober because it makes it a lot easier. Because the only thing worse than waking up early for a flight is waking up hungover for a flight. Right. So fuck that. How old are you now? 25. Still a child. But yeah, you're starting <laughs> to feel like the fucking uh, hangovers and shit catching up a little bit more. Yeah, I, dude, I'm just now starting to realize that all the drugs I used to do are like taking a toll on my brain. Right. Like, they're always like, that's going to put holes in your brain. And you're like, fuck you, fizz till <laughs> I die. Fizz. <laughs> and then fizz now I like, can't remember... Like, I did another podcast with Willie Joy, and I couldn't even remember (laughs) my fucking age. Really? (laughs) I swear to God. I'm like 24, 25, something like that. (laughs) Shit. Tell me if I'm wrong, but I feel like that two-year ago podcast, that that was like when you were doing a lot of blow. Yes. I was very addicted to cocaine and Xanax. (laughs) I got addicted to that shit as soon as I moved to L.A. Really? Okay. And, And then I remember, actually, when I was 19, I moved to L.A., and my first trip back home, I had gained weight. Because everybody says they lose weight. On cocaine, I fucking gained a bunch of weight mm. for whatever reason. It fucks up your metabolism yeah. and shit, you know? And, yeah, so I, I went back home, and I was like, I remember we went to Brad's house, our homie Brad, and I was, like, trying to keep it low-key, but I was, like, fiending, and I was like, yo, like, do you know where, does anybody have blow? Just to do, like, a little bit, but yeah, I was doing hella shit, but I don't do anything now. I mean, the Zans and the fucking Coke is just this roller coaster oh, of yeah. like you're just making yourself go up and then bringing yourself down, and it's just and a it's scary. such an easy way to die from that shit. Yeah, because Coke gets your heart going, and the Xanax has to go like. And you're just constantly trying to figure out like where you need to be at a little bit more of each mm-hmm. one and shit, and it just yeah, dude, I would. Drugs. I'd wake drugs up at bad. like 4 p.m. 
go pick up my ex-girlfriend and pick up uh remember avery mm -hmm. yeah I would, like on my way to pick her up from work i would get a sack and then go home and wait till she goes to bed kill that sack and then stay up till like 5 a.m and then take a zan go to sleep wake up at like 5 p.m so it, it was just that for a while and then i finally started to realize like huh Probably not good for me. If I, do this. <laughs> I know, isn't it weird how we're like adults and we still like at some point yeah. have have to like figure that out for yeah. ourselves? Because for a while it's like is it's the rule is like as long as I can get my work done. Mm -hmm. But then like I don't know, you just get to the point where you're like fuck that. It feels cool to just be like, man, people told me I couldn't do this my whole life. I'm doing it. I'm getting exactly. by. It feels good. I'm gonna and keep I can doing get it. Fucked up. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and you know what the thing about getting fucked up is? Is that there's just a lot of things in life that just seem easier when you're fucked up, but it's all just oh, a yeah. fucking cop out. Oh, yeah. It's like yeah. like performing, for instance. I usually yeah. get nervous, but I would drink and not get super nervous. And I'm no, I'm not sober. I'm not going to be like, yeah, I'm straight edge full. Like, right. I mean, you're but on like, vape. I don't, yeah, I don't smoke cigs. I, I'm trying to cut down on drinking. And I smoke weed before bed. That's pretty much it. But, yeah, it's like you just get in the routine of like, okay, I'm going to go. I'm going to go on a date at a bar because it's easier to talk to girls when I'm drunk, like mm -hmm. shit like that. And then it's like, okay, well, what happens when you can't drink? Right. You know what I mean? So I figure it's easier to get into a habit of not doing that shit. Yeah. And it, especially with the show shit, because it's like going to like most people can't even imagine going to a club without drinking. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Because being in a club is so incredibly yeah. weird and a lot of awkward clubs for play, most people. Like you, you get, they'll bring you back and they'll pay you more depending on how many bottles you sell. Right. You know what I mean? So like if you sell a bunch of bottles, they'll bring you back. So it's like, it's meant for drinking. Yeah. Most people can't even imagine going in there without drinking. But then once you're out, once it's like your job, it's kind of like, well, why the fuck exactly. would I like want to be in that routine and having that? I feel weird about strippers, too. They seem like they always drink on the job. Yeah. I feel like like every either new artist or stripper or whatever, when their job is in like the party thing, like they always start out getting fucked up. And then they're like, wait, like, dude, most of the like really famous DJs they either have never done a drug have quit drugs or like none of them are like fucked up it's hard to maintain that level of work yeah yeah. yeah at some point it catches up to you and then you start to you know fall apart if yeah. you're drinking every night fall apart <laughs> crazy that's what that song's about what even is what song is that Post Malone fall apart. Oh, right. Yeah, there you go. So good. I forgot to wash my hair today. You guys see Post Malone and Pump just sort of sitting around on the <laughs> yeah. ground pretending yeah. to be homeless together? I played PUBG with uh, Post. You know Ellie? Ellie Ozzy? Who's that? He's... Diego's roommate. Xander, he makes music. Oh, He's an yeah. amazing yeah. Rapper. rapper, dude. Right. He's but, so good. Um, no, he... Uh, He's like, yo, Austin wants to play. I'm like, fuck yeah, fool. And then, like, played with him, like, one match. And he's like, hey, I'm going to follow you guys on everything. I was like, bro, yes. <laughs> Love your shit. <laughs> your ninja moment? Yeah. Yeah, shout out to Pose. How do you feel about, I guess you still haven't got a f uh, face tattoo. Conservative decision. Yeah, it's, I'm doing it just, like, mostly for my mom and my dad. Because, mm. like, I'm finally like, dude, I'm going up to here. Okay, I won't touch this for you, but, like, I'm going up to here. And so they're like, all right. Whatever. Always tired. Yeah, it's I crazy. I liked it. Everyone hated it. I thought it was cool. I, I mean, fuck with it. I thought it was an interesting he had some decision. Crazy shit on his side is pretty dope. Yeah, too. if he the thinks it looks shit, cool, then he should have gotten it. No, know? yeah, it was tight. I just like kind of wonder. Like, I just the cheek. The cheek is a lot. Yeah, foolish. It was just like really big. Yeah. Seeing that it's all so. at once, Man, like I, the blast. You know, <laughs> I remember. <laughs> remember when he was gonna he, he was gonna get the foolish tattoo, <laughs> yeah. and he he comes he asks Daniel first, then he asks me. I thought I was joking. And we're like, I just woke up. He's like, Yo, should I get foolish tattooed right here? And we're both like, No, <laughs> do not do it. It looks good now though. It looks sick. Yeah, you did a great so job. Dope. No, it came out way better I than it. I thought it was gonna be. Why honestly. did you even ask us? I didn't. I mean, no, I heard you call like six people too, and they're no, all I did. Like, I'm like, they're all like, no, dude. Don't I was like, do yeah, that. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. Bro. Something about face tattoos where they always seem like a terrible idea before you get it, and then you get it. It doesn't seem like yeah. that big a deal once you got it, right? Yeah. Yours are pretty far. I too. like your. I like you that. Me? It's so low key and small. What the yeah. cross? Yeah, yeah. Cross. Thanks. Yeah, I've been like thinking it. about. I want to get like the yarmulke area of my head tattooed. Fine. She's getting a yarmulke area. tattooed. Yeah, I was yeah. thinking about that. A little Ben Shapiro yeah. look going on there. Always yeah. covered. People in is probably the best one, bro. What? The people in is probably the best one. Oh, thank you. I appreciate so far. It. So I mean, oh, yeah, so that's right. Well, I want to get the I'm gonna get the compass for X. Like in here. Yeah. Like the way he had it kind of. But I don't want to go like get a full cheek right here. Oh my god, dude. No, a tree. And you should, you should do it. You know slime dollars. Mm -hmm. Cole Bennett did his new music video. He's got like a fucking giant, like Illuminati pyramid in the center of his forehead, bro. Holy shit. I, have one of those. Crazy. I don't know if that's actually what it is, but it looks like that. 
It's new, massive. New music is taking tattoos to another level, bro. It's almost like the face fa- face tattoos are the new vines. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> you can't make money from them. I mean, actually, yeah, you, you can. get it tattooed in seven seconds. Yeah. That's good. When we much. were doing that last interview, Vine was probably still around. Yeah. Or at least it was. I think that was one of the questions I was asking. Like, is Vine still thing? Dude, it just never made money, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? If they were smart, they would have like made Vine playlists. So they can monetize it. Because you can yeah. monetize something if it's 30 seconds, but not if it's six. Right. So if they did, like, your Vine playlist, then they could put a fucking ad on it, and they'll make some fucking revenue. <sighs> Do you miss Vine? No, not at all. Really? No. I kind of miss it. I miss being it on it, but I, I don't miss, like, me on it. Oh, like, making yeah. videos and having people come up to you, be like, yo, man, I fuck with you and your videos. It's like, bro, <laughs> I've been doing music almost 10 years. <laughs> Thank you, but fuck you. I remember the. La- I think the last time that we actually like hung out, and, like went and did something in real life, was around the time of that interview, and it was like we went to the Santa Monica Pier. Oh, because it was when Pokemon Go first came out. Yes. We were all oh, hyped so as fuck. On- I'm the only one who still plays it. Shame on me. Um, but dude, people were coming up to you and Nick and saying, mm-hmm. "Fucking sud, dude." That's like, it- does that happen like five percent as much as it used to? Now or? I'm actually really excited now because I've taken like the last year and tried to like only put out shit if it's like videos that aren't like studied where it's not just a quick thing where it's like an actual like the whole thing's funny right um and like i've been toning down putting out music under getter and stuff to kind of reset it but it's been working because more people like i was in the airport with my brother yesterday did i come home yesterday i forgot Uh, i don't even know what day it is today i think so yeah well whenever i came home like there was like two kids at the airport and then earlier that day like at a fucking gas station like shit like that but they're coming up for the music so i'm like fuck yes it's finally working that's like that litmus test like do they know about me from the thing i'm hyped on or some random shit i did a couple years ago exactly i feel that like I, regardless if they fuck with me it's fine but i would prefer the music part <laughs> i feel that now when people come up to me they say what's up with that boom guy <laughs> like yeah. The past. Oh, I saw that shit. Yeah, Shout past couple Boone. weeks. That's like I was in Hawaii, and it's everybody, everyone just what? What the fuck was up with that boom thing? In Hawaii? Yeah, everybody. Yeah. It was just that's the only. Dude, like, you know where they really fuck hmm. with you and like all the underground rap and shit that you've interviewed? Where? Thessaloniki, Greece. What? It's like the smallest place in Greece. Ooh. Look at this dick sucker. There's not. A, <laughs> there's not a lot of stuff there at all. For real? There's nothing to do. But when I was there, dude, I played a. I played a sh- show in like a warehouse, and nobody was talking about EDM. Nobody was talking about me. They were talking about you and Suicide Boys. They're like, we had Night Lavelle here two weeks ago, and he sold it out in like five minutes. And like, the, I guess Suicide Boys went out there and shit. But like, yeah. it's crazy, dude. Like, I did not think Thessaloniki, Greece. Of all places, wow. would be like heavy hip hop. I mean, I went to I went to Greece a couple of years ago, but not for any like shit, just for like bike shit. Yeah, damn. What that, Athens? Yeah, Athens is dope. It was lit, but we were riding every day, so I didn't get to like really. Oh, I don't. I feel like riding. You probably like get to see more cool stuff than like going there on some music shit. Yeah, then we were just gonna... like we'll walk like two miles down the street and back. But yeah. did you uh, meet any gypsies? Not that I necessarily remember, but maybe shit. people that, like steal your shit. Oh, not like that. <laughs> Why that happened to you guys out there? No, I mean, like, I've just had a lot of run-ins where, like, they'll try to steal my shit. And I'm just like, well, I'll fuck you up. <laughs> like, what are you doing? You ever get, like, really robbed on tour? I've never been. I almost got robbed in uh, Patterson, New Jersey. How so? Years ago, fool. Like, before any vines or anything. I think I was 17 or 18. I was booked a show in Philadelphia. Or, sorry, not Philadelphia. Patterson, New Jersey. And the venue caved, so they got this, like, random bar. But we didn't know it was owned by a gang. So we play there, and, like, while I'm playing, they're, like, I guess in the green room fucking with people's shit. And I had my backpack with my laptop on me and shit. And then as we're leaving, I go to the green room, and then they're, like, okay, everyone out. And I was, like, okay, I'm not asking questions, whatever. Everybody else got their shit stolen. So I'm waiting out front for a ride, and uh, I don't know. Someone, someone said some shit, and I wasn't thinking because I was kind of drunk, and I told them to suck my balls. And then I got punched in the face hard. Sounds like a crazy story. And then a car pulls up and like four dudes jump out of this car and just start like beating me and my friend's ass into an alley. And we're just walking like, my bad, dude. I didn't mean it. I was just, you pissed me off. And they're like, give us your fucking bag. I'm like, I'm not giving you shit because it was like my life in a bag, all my work and shit. And so like they kept beating our ass and shit. And then one dude like had a gun and was like, you're trying to die, white boy. And then (laughs) my friend socks and we just bounced, like ran through the alley. He punched the guy with a gun? 
No, not the dude with the gun, but okay. he like got like it was like a full group of dudes like all around us, and he was just like sucking. Like there, it was so quiet, and then this dude like he wasn't like this, but he had the gun, and like we saw it, and then his friend got socked, and we dipped. But it was fucking crazy. We jumped in a pizza guy's car. <laughs> Holy We're just shit. like, dude, you need to drive. We need to go now. You should make that a skit. This is like the very early days of you touring and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was gnarly. Made like six hundred bucks. <laughs> you still got paid? Yeah. Oh wow, that's pretty good. Yeah, I just did like a wire. Oh, yeah, you did a wire trip. afterwards? Yeah. <laughs> I might have forgot about that after like, that. Dude, I'm so sorry. I'm like, okay, fu- I'm never working with you <laughs> ever again. That's some scary shit that a bar shit. could just be owned by a fucking right? gang, I mean, bro. that's what they were saying. Maybe did you hear about just... that, uh, that club in Seattle last week? Foundation, they got, yeah. They got busted for, like, an insane amount of drugs. Yeah. yeah. So many yeah. drugs. I, was, I just played a show in Eugene, and the people who did that show... Uh, they used to bring me out to Foundation. The club is so dope, but I think it was just the people that worked there that were sketchy. Like the bar people. So yeah. what? some club got caught with like an insane amount of drugs or something? Yeah, it was like a shitload. I've heard like, so many things. I've heard it was drugs. I heard it was like weird stuff with girls. I heard it was like... No, I read an article. It was like... There were like crazy numbers, like a thousand capsules of Holy Molly fuck. and like a thousand of this. Damn, a thousand of that. Like, this is a big ass picture. You see all of it. It's so crazy. I mean, if I owned a nightclub, I'd probably want to be, like, selling drugs, too. But I would probably, like, like control myself machine. and not Pyro's do it. Yeah. So good. Molly vending machine. Want to grab a water? Oh, yeah, of course. Well, you want to grab it for him? Yeah, control the market. Yeah, and I'm going to grab my backpack, too. He's going to grab his backpack. What do you got in there? Rub- rubber chicken or something? Huh? You got rubber chicken in there or something? I have an Uzi. Look at this leather leather bag. Leather bag of sex toys. Nah, it's just I just wanted to grab my, my other jewel. just says get on it. Is that is that a common nickname for you? Just get? No, I just, they said three letters, so I was like, oh. Get it. Oh, it's in my pocket. Get her done. I'm going fucking crazy. When you look back at that time period of, like, the, where the Jeez. Vine shit was first going crazy, is that kind of like, do you have fond memories of it? Because it's, it, hell yeah. Vine was so raw that it was like, you weren't, like, overthinking shit. You were yeah. just sort of making crap. Like, dude, I used to overthink shit, and then Nick was just like, hey, man, just chill. Once you make one really funny thing, people are going to think anything you do is funny. His shit was but like that. that. Was a double-edged sword. At that time. What, you think that, like, doing too much of the fucking comedy shit sort of changed your image or what? No, I don't. I think it sculpted my image, but I think it was the wrong image. Mm. But I didn't know it was the wrong image at the time. I was, like, fucking loving it. Like, yeah, man. Because we made, like, so much money from the study shirts. Uh. And then I got my car, and I'm like, dude, this is never going to end. And then it ended. And damn, Daniel got on the Ellen show. I didn't get shit. <laughs> <laughs> but so what? You think that like that afterwards, like the remnants of that was just that you weren't viewed like as seriously as a DJ or whatever? Yeah, I feel like up until recently, I've never been viewed as a serious musician. Because at least in my opinion, from being inside and looking out, like when you're in it, you're like, this is so cool. But once you're like not down with dubstep anymore house or like any of the stuff i used to make <clears throat> which i still love but i just don't want to make it but you kind of start singing as lame as fuck right you know what i mean like i don't know i'm not talking shit on anyone or anything in particular but i feel like i have a parent's brain now where i look at something and i'm just like no <laughs> no no that's, that's always the battle from south yeah. park i mean that's how i feel every time i look at like a 16 year old fucking rapper kid and he's got you know a pyramid tattooed on his head and he's got a gun in the video and stuff it's like there's a part of me that's like oh you poor kid like yeah you know, just go to school right. get a scholarship or something man and it's like yo if it makes him happy do it whatever you want right. to do i used to be uh when i was very depressed i would just talk shit on everything everything full like i'd be like yo fuck that a uh, cup. Why did you get that cup? You're a bitch for getting that cup. Or like when I started to transition and I would just talk shit on so much stuff. And even like now I'm like looking back like fuck. <laughs> like at the old interviews we did, I would talk so much shit. And I'm what like, were you Damn. talking shit about? I forget. Just random shit. Like candy kids or lights, light gloves and oh, stuff. Yeah. And now it's like I get it and I understand it, but it's not my thing. But like I shouldn't have talked as much shit as I did. Right. Do you even think- like that, like that, the, the I got in this stupid... I didn't even get in a fight. This kid punched me over some dumb shit at a club. And I just went on fucking Twitter. And I'm like, this kid has herpes. This kid... Blah, blah, blah. Like, talking so much shit because I just got sucker punched. And I'm pissed off. And then, like, months go by. And I'm like, fuck. I just ruined this kid's career. I felt so bad. Really? <laughs> yeah. Did you see the long-term, like, negative effects of that? Or was it just his? Uh, What do you mean? Like, did you have like negative things happen to your career because you spazzed out on Twitter? I or? did, but it wasn't because of that, because I did like a 
show in Atlanta a while ago. And I just had a bad fucking day and I ended up talking so much shit. I'm like, fuck this industry, fuck this person, fuck this. Like, all this shit sucks, blah, 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 blah. And like, at the time I was like, yeah, I'm passionate about this. This should matter. People are going to know me for saying this. But then my manager's like, fool, no one fucking cares. Like, they just want content. Like, stop saying this shit. And the next thing you know, my prices are going down. I'm getting less shows and stuff. So I was just like, fuck. And that's when I knew that I got to stop being such an ass. Right. It's like a weird thing in, like, sort of the club world where you, like, have to act like you just, like, fully appreciate that kind of shit. Yeah. And it's not even, like, I used to look at it as, like, lying to your fans. But it's just, like, lying and holding shit back are two different things. Right. You know what I mean? So, like, if you know a very racist person... Like, you could know someone who's extremely racist, but you'll never know that they're racist because they don't say it. Right. Right? They just hold it back. So I feel like I'm not saying I'm extremely racist. <laughs> just, I'm just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I just feel like there's a time and place. No, yeah, totally. I mean, I've, I've had to learn that about, like, you know, I always, always had that urge when, I, like, some, everybody's freaking out about some new rapper. And I'll just be, like, thinking in my head, like, This no, is fucking whack. This is terrible. Right? This yeah. is not it. You guys are fucking idiots. Like, why are you buying into the stupid shit? But I've just learned over the years that I can never say that because it just right? is never gonna like. You'd rather want to be well. learned. Or yeah. you, you'd rather want to be known as like the guy Somebody that doesn't know about it, worse yeah. than, or rather than the guy who talks shit on everything. Yeah. Or somebody who could be like helping, or at the very least would just not feel the need to jump in. Like it's yeah. not. I, sometimes I love when I see two people beefing. They're right in my like sort of circle of people that I know and that I'm around and stuff, and they're beefing, and I'm just sitting back on Twitter, just not participating and not having anything to do with it. Yeah. And just feeling so good that I don't have to get right? involved. You like you could say something, but yeah. I could jump right in here yep. and probably. And but it can be tough too because when you're in that moment, you realize that like, especially if the people are like highbrow, they're like you jumping in, like you could like just become part of this. Like if everybody's talking about Trippy and Six Nine, if you say something about <laughs> Trippy or Six Nine, then boom, you're part of it, you're and every, and they're probably going to be talking about you too, and you're going to get the goods and the bad side yeah, of yeah. both. I, I almost feel like that's like the attraction for a lot of people when they do that. Mm. You know, oh, yeah, you know what I mean. Like that's the whole point in their eyes. It's drama, I think. Yeah, they just want people to talk about it. Oh, I totally agree with that. So that that incentive of like, I mean, let's be real. People do insane shit for clout. Hell yeah, yeah. you know. And that I will just never stop being amazed by it. Right? <laughs> I am not like I'm just like holy shit, right? I'm never I've never talked shit on someone to do that does something fucking retarded. Uh, God, I just said retarded. That's all right. I still say that shit too. I'm sorry. I try not to say faggot, but I still say yeah, retarded. I've, I've tried to take that out of my vocab, but yeah. yeah, I don't know. I feel like when people do crazy shit for clout, it's like, dude, you have the balls. I do not respect yeah go That's get sick. that because yeah. once you get to a little bit more established point in your career you're not going to really be able to like be as reckless as right. you're being right now exactly. or but then you look at someone like six nine who's still like way more he's way more reckless now than he was when he started so i mean That's, and they're just like raising the bar too mm -hmm. like people are just going to get crazier and crazier which it, is, yeah it's, have, did you see that video a while ago of boonk like stealing donuts <laughs> Oh, he just so walked old. in the donut that's store like and like one walked of the first ones. That yeah, was like OG Boonk. New, new Boonk is this. <laughs> <laughs> Forehead to the wall, man. That hey, was fucking crazy. Hey, how big did he get from that though, bro? That probably that video probably did really good, right? But it's not like he has well, he does have an Instagram now, but I don't know if anybody believes that it's a real Instagram. So it's like It is his real Instagram. I know that, but like do people know because it's not verified or whatever? Kodak's not verified. He isn't. No. Wow, that's rough. Yeah. He's out in eight days, so it's pretty lit. You're verified. I'm not verified. What? Yeah. My Twitter. condolences. <laughs> Soon. On Twitter. Your account's like new though, right? Yeah. On you Twitter, I don't really like interact with people who aren't verified for the most part because that verified tab and the mentions, mm -hmm. I look at that a lot and I forget that the other one exists. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes I'll be, realize, I'll be like, oh yeah, like most of my like people that I follow on Twitter or interact with aren't verified, so I'm not really seeing what they're saying. That, yeah. that might be bad. I've been liking like everything now and also having random spurts of like talking to fans. Mm. Like if they'll reply to something, they'll be like, oh, that's cool. Blah, blah. There was one I've listened to this kid's track and like gave him advice on it and my opinion on it. And it like people were stoked. So 
Shit works. Yeah. I, I, but I like to like interact with fans in a way where I can like not have <coughs> them be the only one who knows about it. Yeah. You know, like people yeah. get hyped as fuck if you like quote tweet them. Yeah. But then other people get to see that you did it. Whereas if you just like respond to a kid in a DM, it's like yeah. you're only really like. But then the other thing too is if you acknowledge that you look at your DMs on Instagram or Twitter, then boom, your yeah. shit go insane. Yeah. I think my DMs were public one time for 10 minutes. My really? message requests are fucked. <laughs> I've always had my shit Can't open on Twitter. Anymore, I have like this weird thing where I cannot deal with a little badge. That says the number of notifications. Yeah. So I would go fucking crazy. And what's annoying is that kids can just put you in a group chat. And then that group chat will be going for or years. Video bing, 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 bing. Oh, I don't have that on. No, yeah, Instagram. I, it's weird. For real? Yeah. Dude, I've been put in like a couple of random meme group chats. And I just don't understand why. <laughs> like, what's up, like, man? Anyway. I'd be kind of hyped on that, though. I'd be like, damn, I'm like in on this meme crew. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I'm going to ride this one out. <laughs> it's like a group of friends like. Why meme did you gang. put me in there? Yeah, right. That's the biggest thing I hate about being 34 is I just feel like my meme You're making... 34? Sk- yeah, it's rough, right? Dude, I thought you were late 20s this whole time. Mm, no. All right. I Old have ass. kids in their 34. late 20s. Uh, no. You have kids? No. Oh. So but I was just kidding. <laughs> what, you got a chick pregnant when you were three? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, when I was Potent. three, I was blowing nuts. You shouldn't go by Adam 22. You should go by Adam Potent. <laughs> Potent. Blowing nuts. I actually have no reason to believe that I can reproduce because actually when i was like 21 one of my first times ever drinking got so drunk that i couldn't tell this girl to get off of me nutted in her and then she told me she got pregnant but I've, i i don't know if i believe her and then since then i have not even had a pregnancy scare and that's like 13 years of raw dog and chicks so i've had a pregnancy scare but it wasn't real she was just trying to like keep me there mm. after she fucked me over and i was just like dude you can't do that that's evil that's, <laughs> that's so evil up. Oh, I, know. I, keep, I just got my nose piercing. I keep jabbing it. Keep hitting it. What are you trying to accomplish with that nose piercing? Honestly, nothing. I went to go get this, and then they're like, "We have a two for one." And I was like, oh, "Let's do it. <laughs> let's fucking go." <laughs> it was gonna be the best fucking fourteen dollars I ever saved in my life. Yeah. Shout out High Priestess Tattoo and Eugene. Oh, you got it done out there. Yeah. Nice. I, first thing I did when I got to, I, w- I was at my mom's house with my brother this weekend, and I was like, "Hey, can we go get piercings?" He was like, "Yeah, I'll drive you." Pierce is a lit man. I never had one. I always wanted to have one. Maybe I should just do it. You should get gauges. Oh, yeah. This <laughs> late in the game, it was so funny. Yeah. <laughs> My name's Adam. I'm 34. You I'm... look like you should have them. I'm good. Who, Diablo? I really <laughs> like piercing. Diablo needs to get this pierced. <laughs> yeah. Yo, so funny. You like a bone like through crazy. your fucking. That head. would be sick. You do look like ridge? you should have mad piercings and shit. I feel like you would have gauges. No, for some no, reason. no, bro. Because I just somehow have made it this far without mm-hmm. doing it, so I can't do it. Do you ever want gauges? No, I don't think I ever thought about that much. Good, you, have crazy. you seen my brother's ears? Yeah, that's crazy. They, they yeah. snap. Bro, his snap. brother has a crazy. Like, what, he broke them? Yeah. yeah. He, he went from like a snipped. double zero to like an inch and a half in like three months. Shout <laughs> out Not Dylan. doing well and they snap. I remember the feeling back in the day of like making out with a girl, going to suck her neck, moving on up to the ear, forgetting that she and had gauges. Like, it smells like a fucking yeah. dead carcass in Your there. Cheese. And cheese. all of a sudden I've got like my fucking nose and mouth by it. And You're then like, you realize <laughs> that this is a center of death and decay. Yeah. Hyperventilate oh. from cheese. You think anyone ever fucked one of those holes? Of course. Yeah. Definitely. You ever get freaky with that thing? <laughs> <laughs> Remember that old family guy with the little... <laughs> the whole... Oh, throat. the fucking... You ever get freaky with that thing? <laughs> the, the smoke box? <laughs> Dude, I bet you could go on Pornhub right now and search, like, gauge fucking, and you'll see it instantly. Oh, yeah, easily. So, yeah. my name's Rick. Today, we're going to fuck a gauge. It probably doesn't... Even, it probably gets stuck in there, and then you're like, wait, wait, don't move, don't move. Hold on, let me... Okay, well, now do? let's go in again. Took Here, three let me hours lube up your ear really quick, like... Yeah. Let me just really fuck this ear hole. Yo, Chris! Oh, is he still here? I gotta tell him to pick up the phone when the fucking RJ dude calls. Pick God up damn it. Oh, I'm gonna be back one second. No Talk, make sure you guys are really entertaining while I'm going. Time to bring the lighter. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> right, I'm in so charge. Both of you take guys. your shirts off. Oh, Shit, he's dude. back. Thank God. Oh. Right, I just wanted to make sure that you picked up when he called. Can I see your lighter again? Oh, okay. Pick up the phone. Got it. Thank you. So what, what, what do you feel angle? like... Oh, yeah, I forgot my headphones. Did you make that case? Yo, you know what this? I was watching last night? This? No. That's oh, a bear wood. The lighter. No, this is his. Oh. I was watching your Shred Collective uh, thing at the barracks last night. Oh, yeah? The little skate that jam shit, shit. That looked fun. a while ago. How long ago was that? Fun. It was like a year and a half. It was right when we got Butters. 
Yeah, like year and a half, like yeah. last spring. That was fun. That was yeah. so fun. Suicide was Silence sick. played. Right. Ooh, it was so fun. I was so stoked to play on the same stage as Suicide Silence. That was amazing. <sighs> the acoustics were trash. Oh, there was no bass. It was all mid highs, but there, it was so fun. It's just all concrete, Skate so it, park. it sounded like just like one crazy reverb bowl. Yeah, I remember when I went there to go check it out to, for like, like to make sure we wanted it. And like I went with my manager, my day to day, and we were checking out. Steve Barrows walking us through. Fucking Eric Costin pulls up, or no? Wait, who was it? Yeah. Yeah, Eric Costin, because they call it Barracks because it's Steve yeah. Barra and Eric Costin, so Barracks. But yeah, I met him and I was just like, "Yeah, what's up, dude? I don't know who you are, but I fucking love Eric Costin." Remember those videos back in the day? Yes. Of Ooh. course. So crazy. I fought with Eric Andre. He went to my high guy. school, bro. It's lit. Well, Shout I, mean, out bro. I had Chad Muska on here, and that was Ooh. like the realization that everyone on earth like remembers shit from video games way better than they Hell remember yeah. anything else. Are you kidding me? You right know, now, like he's so educational because he was such a big skater, but it's like everyone just mentions Tony Hawk Pro Skater when you talk about him. It's oh, yeah. crazy. Yeah. It's All fucking those, awesome. The original too. guys on there, I forgot who else was on Spider Man was on it. Yeah. He was tight. Like Day One song. Day One. Yeah. Rodney it's, Mullen. It's just a totally, you have yeah, Rodney Mullen. Remember? Because there was all these like clips of Rodney doing like weird dark slides and shit in like the intro or whatever. Yeah. And I just remember seeing that like 800,000 times in my life and just bugging. No, do you remember what song was it? I think it was a Misfits song, maybe? Was there a Misfits song in it? it I don't, maybe it wasn't Misfits, but it was like, meh, 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 meh. So many. What song is that? I can't even think of it. It was. Fuck, what was that band called? No, Dead Kennedys. Yes, yes. Oh my god. Anytime I hear that, I just picture dropping in on that warehouse level. Oh man, I wish rappers knew about Jello Biafra more so that they could like rhyme shit with Jello Biafra. You got anything? Rapper? Jello Biafra? Yeah. What is that? The singer of Dead Kennedys. Oh, shit, I had no idea. On am um, saying Biafra. Right? Hello, P. P. Raptor. <laughs> Hello, P. Raptor. There you go. <laughs> Hello, I P. <laughs> Shout out to Jello Biafra. Hello, I P. In the rafters. Mm, dude. Bars. You like that? Oh, Something Adam like that. It doesn't make sense. Adam right? Potent mixtape. Potent. <laughs> you say potent nuts on deck. Mr. Potent. Oh. Adam will drop a mixtape. I will not. I'm not. I'm not the rapping type. I just. I can't do it. I think you could. Oh, I could. Yeah. The other day, I wrote this really good rap. In it. I rap very rare. In a vlog the other day, I spit some bars about somebody's mom's house. I was eating your mom out in Ooh. your mom's blouse. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that was pretty That's good. good. You just keep stacking it up. But you know, I'll just spit like a fire four bar massacre just here and there. But I'm not. I have an exclusive Adam tag on Lil Nar song. You remember that? Oh yeah. I don't forget what in I said. In a trap. What do you Diablo could go straight your song, dude. Trap, you, 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 could do it. you think that, that you got the Adam on this the track. character could write better than me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got writing credit. Do you? A lot more songs than you do. Really? Yeah. But yeah, what's so your writing cool. credit like? That's so I can't cool. Tell you. Google it. <laughs> you're like, you're like, you should say T H A instead of T H E. Yep. I It'd be know. like a little more hip. I don't even know what you just said. The. The. Oh, the. The. That's how it should be spelled. Thy. I grew up trying to make that real decision of like, am I a T-H-E kind of guy? Am I a T-H-A kind of guy? Or am I a D-A kind of guy? Because like rap albums back in the day, you look at the fucking song titles in the back and it would be like D-A a lot. I just, I just write in Japanese. Oh, yeah. That, like that makes everything guy. so much yeah. easier. You're just like... You know what? Another thing I really have gotten from rap music is always replace like replace the S with a Z at the end of the word, right? <laughs> yeah. Always. Dollars. I learned that from rappers. Dollars. Well, the slime dollars kid I was just talking about, he is a, a Z. Yeah. Yeah. To me, that's a lot more rapper-ish than an RS. Yeah, for sure. Who's your favorite rapper out right now? Um, my favorite rapper out right now. Well, I, I've been listening to the YG album a lot, so YG. YG's fire. I fuck with YG. I'm very yeah. of the moment. I don't like to think of anything in terms of like my favorite thing of this year. I don't think like that. Yeah. A lot of people love thinking like that. And it's always Kanye's kind of my been favorite, a weird. Probably like rapper, producer, everything right now. Ellie Ozzy. Yeah, Kanye? I was going to say. Ellie Ozzy, baby. Ellie Ozzy is the man. I don't, know, I don't know what I think of Kanye as a rapper or a producer at this point in his career. I just think about like all How was this the thing? stuff he's done You went together. to his release thing, right? That was lit. Yeah, I can't it talk to you about cool. Yeah. It was cool. Are you familiar with 070 Shake? 
Yeah. Yes. Do you know that she left Jules as her manager? She, yeah, she told me. Jules I just started that. tripping about it on Twitter like did, two that, hours like, ago. I didn't I even know that, Jules, Ju- I, cool. that Jules Shake did management. Oh, yeah. I thought she, she just did like parties. She always have, has just managed Shake. But then today, she was just like, oh, as soon as Shake got on the Nas album, she just left me. Oh, I'm shit. like, oh, my God. Yeah, that's, that, that Shake girl was, she had the trailer next to me at heart. Oh, okay. I've never met her. I've never heard her shit, but I saw her and I was like, hey, you look very familiar. She is really good. But I mean, that makes you wonder why Jules wouldn't have had her under some sort of contract, right? I think yeah. she has an other artist now, too. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it was like a friends first type thing. I've done a lot of shit with friends where there's no contract. Like me and Nick's thing. There was no contract. It was just kind of like, hey, don't fuck each other over, right? Cool. Right. Do you feel like that worked? Yeah. I think so. That's good. Yeah. But at the same time. I don't know. Managing an artist for three years and not getting them on paperwork. Oh, no. Yeah, if you're, if you're managing someone, I feel like. But then again, if you manage story. them, it's like you can just cancel a management contract. That's yeah. like yeah. signing them to like actual like label shit is different, right? Yeah. yeah. If, if it's a homie to homie making a contract and shit too, I feel like you can kind of make it pretty simple where it's like, hey, I represent you. Boom. Yeah. I mean, you could write I, that shit together too. Being a manager must like, suck. In Japanese. I can't imagine wanting to manage somebody. Yeah. I'd probably do that once this music thing's over. Really? I just like older. finding music and like being like cool and trying to help that shit put on the platform. Yeah. And discovering you know, music, not like managing it. That's just some other shit. When you're older and you're in the industry for so long, I feel like you just know everything about it and then you could teach someone else kind yeah, of through exactly. management. Yeah. You can be like, well, when I did this, this happened. So you should do this. <laughs> right. <laughs> I just Back had G Herbo on day. here and he was telling me all about, well, because he signed fucking Juice World. So Crazy. Dude, I remember uh, All Girls Are the Same when that shit was at like 20K or 30K plays on yeah. YouTube. I found that shit and I was like, what? This is so sick. <laughs> and then I showed my girlfriend and her little sister is immediately obsessed with the Juice World. And then I checked and it was at like 3 million. Yeah. I'm like, dude, like, he's so good. I feel like I saw him hit a million followers like a couple weeks ago and I looked yesterday and it was like 2.6 and I was Jesus. like, wow, that that happened it's fast. It's like Lil Pump, dude. Lil Pump's numbers blew the fuck up so quick. Yeah. Crazy. It was those Xanax cakes. Everybody <laughs> wanted to see another one. He had a, a Xanax cake at one and three million, I believe. I Most just remember. His birthday was a, a, a not. It was no, like he, had a, he had a pint cake. Yeah. When I filmed that was day in the life of them, that's when he had oh, yeah, a lean pint dope. cake. No, it wasn't actual lean, but no. it looked like a, a pint. That's so sick. <laughs> I, no, dude, I remember Nick randomly is like, have you ever heard of Smoke Perp? Like so fucking long ago. And then I was like, no. And he showed me a shit. It was like, um, fuck. Like I did that smoke- something bands. Uh, Ski Mask was his first song. Because I did that interview when I think he had one song out, which it seems like a strange yeah, decision yeah, in remember, retrospect. Yeah. He, he showed me Smoke Perp, and I was like, what the fuck? And I just remember knowing about Smoke Perp um, and then seeing Lil Pump, like, <laughs> Smoke Perp retweeting a video of Lil Pump getting head. And then it's like, <laughs> whoa, now Lil Pump is fucking huge, too. Holy shit. It's just crazy. Yo, yeah. man. I remember when, like, Smoke, in that interview, we're asking Perp about Lil Pump, but it's as in like, yo, what's up with that Lil Pump dude? Like, that, that yeah. dude's cr- Like, the idea that he would actually go on to become right? this ridiculously successful rapper is so but weird. But I love it. It's so cool. Right. I'm so glad he is like a representative of that kind of music because he's so goofy and just dope. Like, I don't know. It's Harvard like, dropout, bro. It's going to be fine. Did you see that he decided to do it with Harvard spelt wrong? It's going to be dope, bro. H A R V E R D. I think it might go number one. Yo. That's, that's funny because then that's he can't brand. he can't get sued by Harvard probably and it's like it's funny because it's yeah, like it's he spelled funny. it wrong. Yeah, Harvard. I still like get people asking me if Lil Pump went to Harvard. Like actual people. We I went. Know. We went one time, bro. We yeah, actually pulled that, up to Harvard. It was dope as fuck. Snowball fight. But like Crazy. actually go to Harvard. Like go to the school. Take classes. <laughs> he's just about to turn what eighteen. <laughs> Gazzy. I feel like he's been Checking seventeen for like. Ever. Yeah, that's just crazy. Because when I met him, he had just turned 16. So, like, it's been a long two years. Dude, I'm planning on doing a speech at my high school in a couple years. <laughs> you definitely got to do that. Somebody asked me to do it, I think. But I, w- I didn't want to do it at the time. But I want to go back and get, like, all the faculty and parents on board, sit all the kids down in the gym, and basically just give a presentation on how they should. Do- like, you don't have to be here at all. <laughs> you can leave right now, and it wouldn't make a difference. But <laughs> it would just be funny to do, like, a slideshow. <laughs> And have like next slide. This is a man you might know, Lil Pump. Uh, he dropped out dropped and out he Harvard. has three of your houses on his neck right now. <laughs> next slide. I feel like that'll be really fun. I feel like there's probably like a heavy vetting process. I also feel like if I went to a high school, people would probably think it was kind of creepy no matter why I was there. <laughs> probably. Just would be like a weird visual. I'm way too tall and like tatted up and shit. 
It'd be funny as fuck. Like, you should do it. Fuck is this guy? Because people are always like, take me to prom. It'll be so great. <laughs> I get those DMs every day. Take me to prom. And I always just think like, oh, man, <laughs> if I took someone, if I like did that as a joke, took some little girl to prom. Oh, my God. That would be a weird day on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. That'd be crazy as fuck. Maybe I'm just not going to go to the prom. Yeah, I definitely do not do that. I didn't even go to my own prom. <laughs> I also did not. I dropped out sophomore year. I All went right. to my prom junior year and took blue Playboys and rolled <laughs> face. <laughs> prom. I was like, oh. Blue Playboys. Holy shit. It was so tight. I'm not going to lie. I did do Molly with a bunch of girls a couple weeks ago. And that was my first time doing Molly in like good. A, over a year. Oh, yeah. It was a beautiful the experience. After, oh, God. The day after E-Tarded, you're just like. What? I'm supposed to drink water to oh live? Oh, my God. It wasn't as bad as it maybe could have been. But oh, I, dude. No, see, know. Molly nowadays, MDMA is like the good part of ecstasy. Right. So it's like Molly is like the perfected. They figured it out, and now it's just a party drug. But like when me and Daniel were in high school and we used to, you know, indulge in pressed pills, you'd get like an orange pill, and they'll be like, yeah, that one has MDMA, Vicodin, fucking Tylenol, <laughs> codeine, like all wrapped up in this little fun little ball and you're like sick and you don't know each one was different it was like skittles bro it was insane i mean the scary part now is people say it's molly but i don't think it is i feel like it's still cut there's there's so much shit out there like just don't, just don't do fucking Molly. Yeah, don't do drugs. Don't yeah, do don't drugs. Do Molly. That's just too crazy. Unless Molly's a porn star offers it to you. <laughs> you ever see that thing with Adam from Workaholics? And he's like, remember, kids, don't do drugs <laughs> unless somebody gives them to you. Then it would be rude to not take drugs. But you know what's <laughs> crazy, bro? Now every rapper does like ecstasy now in Molly, bro. Like, yeah. Every, all of them, bro. It's so crazy, bro. If, as long as they repeats. don't overdo it, I mean, they'll just be dumb. Like, I know a I, lot of rappers on E pills. Yeah, yeah, bro. It's the shit. Dude, Crazy. fucking Mac Dre back in the day would fizz every day. Yeah. He'd just be fucking on ecstasy. Yeah. <laughs> every not gonna lie, bro. They like, make dude, hits. there's videos. If you a lot look of up hits. Mac Dre Trio TV, people there's on like ecstasy. Uh, videos of like Mac Dre and his crew in Hawaii just taking ecstasy pills, walking around Hawaii, <laughs> rolling balls with glasses on, just like, uh, it's the fucking funniest <laughs> shit ever. I feel like we all know that like one like what kid who who just like just like dude took way too many drugs growing up and I'm is so like spiritual. completely fried out of their brain now. Like <laughs> yeah, how do you read again? Speak. <laughs> how do you know how to read? <laughs> You know what? I feel like I meet a lot of rappers who like just do a shitload of blow whenever they go in the studio, yeah. and that you would never know. That's the place to never do it. know. It's so quick. Yeah. It just gets them in the zone. They just start being productive, start making shit, and it's just weird to like realize, like, oh my god, you too. Yeah. <laughs> Especially in LA, there's a like lot of people. That their do that medication. Shit right yeah. Yep. I mean, I can't imagine a you better ironic, studio bro? drug. Pump is the only sober rapper out right now. Yeah, but he's still That's off the he's lean. That's that big right now. Good for he's him. off the lean. He's off everything, bro. No, but he's on the lean. I well, don't know. I mean, but no, he, imagine. He is the lean. My friend was saying that to me the other day. He goes, imagine how torturous it must be that you're fucking pumped. You're on tour in fucking Portugal, and you can drink all this juice, but you can't smoke a blunt. I know. That shit's crazy. Yeah, this has got to hurt. Okay, you ready? I'm going to get this first try. I believe you. Oh, that's like <laughs> Lil Nars' done. trick, that too, and I can't dude. do it either. Yeah, Lil Nar, shout out Lil Nar. Big cup, big cup can flip. Big cup is what he's attempting. Right? I feel like you gotta yeah. stand up. That's my guy right now, though. I feel like you gotta stand up. I feel I like you gotta stand up. up against inequality. I don't feel like I gotta stand up. You're so fun. The camo man. Welcome to another episode of ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> this is you, a, you do that. A kendama. You like ASMR? It's nice. Uh, no, that shit is fucking weird. <laughs> We were on set for that Real Bros of Simi Valley thing. Right. And one of the dudes came up to me. He was like a little older, obviously trying to relate with me and have like a conversation. And then he like mentions ASMR. And I was like, dude, you want to know what's the most relaxing one? Cutting sponges, which is like the worst one. You hear that and you have just crippling anxiety. (laughs) Really? Oh my fucking God. And he's like, dude, I'm going to go in the corner right now, put my headphones in, fucking listen to this shit. I'm going to tell my kids about it. I'm like, okay, just listen to it. And he's sitting there like, you can tell he's uncomfortable. And he's like, fuck yeah, this is great, man. It feels so good. ASMR. I don't get how it could be like somebody's fetish. I don't know. Or like their thing. Like I've, I've, I actually, like Shane Dawson has done it. And then when I watch his regular vlogs, it's kind of like he's doing it. He's like, okay. Today for the vlog, 
going to do this. And I'm like, what are you fucking doing? Just talk normal, Today man. We're going to be observing the sound of farts. <laughs> a fart ASMR? You think you can get away with that on YouTube these yes. days? Yeah. I yes. like it. Oh my God. That would be so gross. Dude, I said come. Demonetized. I said come like twice in a vlog. And it's like, your shit's been demonetized, bitch. <laughs> it's like, cool. Awesome. Thanks, man. Easily. They're just going to kill themselves doing that shit. Or it's going to turn into a new Disney channel. Something's going to happen. It yeah. sucks. And that's what sucks, too, is that I'll get, a, I'll get a podcast demonetized, and I'll be like, why is this podcast demonetized? And they're like, well, in the first five minutes, you talked about anal, se anal sex like eight times. You said fuck 14 times. How about so my, what Instagram does? And fine. just be like, hey. There's some foul language in this. Yeah. Rate your YouTube videos. Like, this is rated fucking not for kids. But the whole thing with them is that they equate, like, monetary worth with spreading it. Like, so if you, once they decide your video isn't good enough to have ads, then it's also like, okay, we're never going to show this to anybody ever. Crazy. Which yeah. sucks. Yeah. Anyway, what are you excited about at this point in your life, Gator? Like, what you got coming up and all fucking that? Fucking album. Album. I was How working long? on that album last time I was here too. The it's same been album. Been two and a half years since Holy I've worked shit. on it. Um, a lot has changed, I'm assuming. Yeah, twelve tracks. Um, it's very depressing, but it's also very. It's like there's a song for each feeling. You know when you wake up and you're just depressed and you don't get it because you're like, what the fuck? Right. Like I got money. I'm doing what I want to do, and you're still just like, what the fuck is going on? Well, I learned that when I put that energy into making music, I feel better. Really? So that's what this whole album is. Wow, that's interesting. It actually makes me really interested to hear it. Yeah, it's definitely like, I was just at iTunes today showing them it for like, so we could talk about playlisting stuff and like, they were like, dude, this is not what we were expecting. Holy shit. But nobody's heard it. Like I said, it's, except for these fools and my manager, but no one's heard it because I want everyone, including my homies who are musicians and my homies who are, just are the shit and who are old as fuck to hear it at the same time. So... Everyone feels it at the same time. That's what's up, man. That sounds, it. it's that sounds dope. Great. It's really good. It's the first thing that I've made in a while where I'm like, I'm proud of that shit. Do you feel like you're like, you are sort of over the period of your life where you were like doing what you had to do to make money or like to be popular. And now you feel like you could just do the stuff you want to do creatively and you're not as connected to like the end result. Yeah. And I also, I, yeah, I, f I feel like now it's more like I want to make music like this music helped me, so I want to make more of this to help other people and also to help me more. And it's just going to get better. And uh, it's not like I'm doing this shit and I'm getting like hell of money. If I'm being real, I've lost money for sure. Like trying to do this new image because then it's like, hey, we want to book you for this much at this stage. And then it's like, mm, we don't want to do that because I don't do that anymore. Mm. And so then it's like, okay, well, that's fucking 50 grand out the window. Shit like that. It's like, I don't mind it. I'm accepting it because I want to go in this new path but i'm still gonna be doing hip-hop stuff and still like lit ass dj sets oh yeah but like the real shit it's like, it's also because i never put my full attention on it because i would be like okay i'm doing music okay i'm doing two clothing brands okay i'm making videos okay i'm traveling a bunch blah 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 but now that i've kind of like daniel runs trippy burger shout out yep we somehow made it this whole time without mentioning it, even though i was thinking yeah. about it, asking the whole time it's trippy right yeah. it's dope as fuck yeah Bye. Trippy New red, shit. but and then my older brother runs Shred, so they're handling that stuff, and I'm not really even involved anymore except for like, hey, do you like this? Yeah, cool. And then like, kind of stopped with the videos, mm. but um, yeah. So now it's just full music all the time. So I feel like that helped a lot too. That's what's up. Oh. I still think we should make some vines. I don't know what they'd be like. Vine but too. I'm down as long as they go on your shit. I'm down. But imagine we made it like a six second limit. That'd be fire. It'd be yeah. weird. I mean, Twitter you could do that on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, Twitter loops it if they're short enough. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Yeah, it has to be short for it to loop it, right? Yeah. 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 But it's still not like, it's yeah. not the same feel. <coughs> Game they were, they were going to do Vine 2. Yeah, what happened to that? I think they did it and then, I don't know, some investor shit where they're like, hey, you can't do that. You're going to get in trouble. So they pulled a plug or some shit. Oh, that's too bad. It always comes back to money. <sighs> Michael Jordan. Anyway, I oh, appreciate you coming through and shit. This is fun. Yeah, dude. It's been a while. Yeah. Should hang should out more. It's like so much more fancy and oh, out. this is nothing. I'm I can't believe this well. is considered fancy. We got we're upgrading very I'm just soon. saying compared to downtown Skid Row, roaches with homeless people puking outside the fucking the doorstep. He lives in my house now and he's clean. We got he's him still clean. Still alive. Yes. Sorry, long like cat, shit, bro. He's ancient, bro. It's a cool ass cat. Yeah. But yeah, dude, you gotta come to New Crib, bro. I'm down. Let's do it. Like right. In Studio City, we've maybe kind of I'll, just stayed in the same circle. Maybe I'll finally rap. Maybe. Do it. I'm, I'm finishing you. my studio. It's going to be done Saturday. I'm going to have a booth. I have bars, so. For days. Let's do it. I believe you. 
I'm with it. Rapping's fun and easy. Hey, we well, got a thousand people in here watching us, even though we're on an alternate channel. That feels really? pretty good. I thousand. Guess. All right. Appreciate you guys. RJ, hey, for the people, well, I got to wrap this up. Oh, yeah. No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes. Brr. Thank you very much to these Rope boys gang. for coming through. Rope gang shit. OG Rope, Rope gang shit. Hey. Cafeteria food. Well, I'm back in the house,